We're going to now take another look at the international uh, papers. Diptyka Laurent is with us in studio. Uh, Diptyka, really a lot of reactions across the world uh, from this presentation, if you like, by Israel's Benjamin Netanyahu uh, concerning Iran's nuclear weapons plan. That's right, a big reveal from the Israeli Prime Minister on Monday. It's on the front pages of the Israeli papers. Al Hayyum here headlines with Iran lied with this image from Bibi's conference, an image that's also on the front page of the conservative paper Jerusalem Post. They call these revelations mind-blowing and say it's a, it's a smoking gun needed for critics of the Iran nuclear deal. But there is some criticism from the American press. Well, The Atlantic, I quite like the headline from The Atlantic's article. They call it a bizarre PowerPoint presentation on Iran. We spoke earlier about another paper likening it to a TED talk because it was very, uh, very tech savvy, that kind of uh, presentation from uh, Netanyahu. Now, from The New York Times, they called it uh, his, uh, his presentation theatrical, saying it's clear that it, the Israeli prime minister's big reveal intended to push Donald Trump away from renewing the deal that expires in a couple of weeks and they say that the findings that were presented the findings were presented to Donald Trump during a visit by the head of Mossad to Washington in January the reason that it's only coming out now is they had to analyze this information indeed the New York Times notes also that a decade ago the chief inspector of the international Atomic uh, Energy Agency also showed proof of Iran developing nuclear weapons. So for them, at least, it's nothing new. No, indeed, a lot of people are questioning the timing of these revelations, if you like. But what are the conservative American newspapers saying about well, it? Well, they're coming uh, overwhelmingly in favor of Donald Trump and Israel, as you can imagine. The Wall Street Journal's editors say Iran has used the windfall from the nuclear deal to fund its regional aggression and says the sooner the world pushes back against Iranian imperialism, the better the chance of avoiding a much larger war. And there's a, I want to point your attention to a very uh, incendiary piece from the conservative uh, website Washington Times. They say the Iranian deals are smelled like rotten fish in the past and now it really stinks. The paper then takes aim at Barack Obama for quote relying on his instincts from his early years as a boy in a Muslim school in Jakarta for being willing to trust the mullahs in signing this deal. I'm quoting there obviously verbatim. Uh, well, let's stick to the American papers for a minute. The New York Times has gained access to the actual questions that uh, special counsel Robert Mueller, who is investigating those allegations of Russian interference into U.S. elections, the actual questions he would like to put to the U.S. president. That's right. We were talking about this earlier, Eve. It's hard to explain exactly why this is important, but it must be said that Mueller's investigation was shrouded in secrecy. We had no idea what kind of angle he was going in for. So it's really, this article is the first look at how he's conducting it. The New York Times has published an a exhaustive list of questions, a range of questions that Mueller wants to ask Donald Trump, for the paper at least. It appears that he's trying to uh, penetrate into the president's thoughts. What's going through his head? They want to, uh, Mueller also wants to examine the relationships that Donald Trump has with his family, notably his uh, son-in-law and uh, closest advisors, and understand what motivated some of his most fiery tweets uh, and look also, importantly, at possible coordination between Donald Trump and Russia during the election. Yeah, any kind of possible influence, if you like, perhaps. Well, let's uh, change a topic now. And the German tabloid Bild is reporting that former Chancellor Gerhard Schröder is being sued. Tell us why. Uh, it's, he's being sued, but not probably not for the reason you think he was being sued. 74-year-old uh, Schroeder is due to marry Kim so Yun, a Korean, a South Korean translator who's 26 years his junior. He's being sued 77,000 euros by the ex-husband of his fiancée. You'll have to keep up with me. Uh, the husband, ex-husband says Schroeder caused him mental anguish because they allegedly conducted an extramarital affair. Now, in South Korea, adultery was actually illegal until 2015, and offenders can still be prosecuted for it. Worth noting, though, that Schroeder has been married and divorced four times, earning him the nickname of Audi Man and Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Not bad, Lord of the Rings, I have to say. Uh, finally, Diptyke, uh, some citizen scientists have discovered a new beetle and named it after a very famous actor. 
a science, that's right, this is from the science website uh, Fizz that reports that a new water beetle was discovered recently on a field trip organized for citizen scientists in Malaysia. They named it, this is the Latin name, I imagine, or scientific name, uh, Grovelinus Leonardo DiCaprioi in honor of Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, worth noting in the past, a, a moth was named after Donald Trump and a big armed fly after Arnold Schwarzenegger. They, uh, they do say this time though, it's not because of, there's a resemblance between the beetle <laughs> and Leo. It's rather to honor his conservation efforts. Okay, I was going to say, I'm not sure if I'd take it as a compliment. If it's somebody one hell of a good beetle looking beetle, beetle I guess. It's not, it's not the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for that review of the international papers. Also, to